First, I would like to apologize because I can't be here in Seoul with you. It was a great honor for me to be invited here, but I have quite serious health problem and I couldn't come to Seoul. So I would like to present briefly some theses about the future of cities. I would like, in fact, to present three main theses. The first one is about metropolization. The second is about the complexification of the cities. And the third one is about the environmental issues and the new clean tech economy. First, about the metropolization and the thesis that the metropolization will go on. What is metropolization? Metropolization is the concentration of urbanization in bigger and bigger cities, in fact, in large urban regions. The reason of metropolization is mainly the division of labor. The division of labor is more and more efficient and needs a change of scale. In fact, we are changing our scale of living, the domestic life, the daily life, but also the scale of the daily economical activities. This more and more specialized societies need so huge urban region. We do not more anymore live at the scale of the small cities of neighbor. We live at the scale of urban region and this metropolization will go on. Some people thought that uh, with the new technologies, perhaps we, will, we will, would less move and that the telecommunication could replace transportation. In fact, that's not at all what is going on. What is ethically going on is that telecommunication, instead of replacing more and more transportation, are stimulating transportation and make possible to live at another scale, the scale of urban region and the scale of a global world. So the first series is that metropolization will go on and that the urban uh, system in each country will be more and more concentrated around this global or huge urban region. The second thesis about the future of our cities is about complexity. In fact, complexity is the result of the division of labor. We are in a more specialized world, so a more complex world. But the complexity is also the result of a very important trend, social trend in our modern uh, countries, which is individualization. What is individualization? In fact, people, individuals, want to have more and more autonomy. They want to control by their, their self their own space, their own time, they want to, be, to make what they want, where they want, with whom they want, at the time they want, and so on. They have, want to have more freedom, more autonomy. And they use the new technologies in this purpose. So, for instance, the technologies of uh, the mobile phone, of uh, internet, of uh, uh, video, and so on, are technologies used by people to get more autonomy. So, we have a greater diversity of ways of life. A diversity of demand for the cities. And this is a very big problem for urban planners, because there are a lot of different ways to use the city, and even each individual can have different needs in the day for the cities. So it's more and more difficult to get simple collective solutions to the problem of the cities. It's more and more difficult also to make planning because this complexity generates more and more uh, uncertainty we don't know how people will use the city 
we don't know what will be the needs in 10 years. So this complexity is really a new challenge, a new issue, issue for planners. And I think this complexity will go on. So we have to develop new technical tools for planning, more strategic, also more what we call heuristic. We have to make uh, urban planning more flexible, more able to adapt to uncertainty and to diversity. So the second stage is that diversity uh, will go on and make city planning more and more difficult. Uh, one consequence of uh, this series is that there is something like a paradox. On one side, people have more and more freedom, autonomy, and on the other side, we need more and more rules to organize the collective life. So the development of individual freedom need in correlation the development of public powers. Democratic public powers, but very strong public powers, because it is more and more difficult to organize the collective life in this context of diversity. The third series is about ecology and environment. It's not a new question, but the way we are setting problems in this field are changing a lot, and I think it's very important to understand that we are getting in a new stage for ecology. The stage where we are now is that one we call generally the question of the sustainable development. Sustainable development is already something very difficult to organize because sustainable development is a compromise between economic issue, social issue, and environmental issue. And these three fields are very different. Economic is a question of efficiency. Social is a question of equity and justice. And environment is a question of ethic. Or ethic, efficiency and justice are three things very far for each from other. So, to organize this sustainable development is already very complicated and it's already a big issue. But now there is a new question with the, which is getting more and more important. It's the question of the climate, the climate change, and the question of the greenhouse effect. It's not all the question of ecology, but now everybody recognizes that it is the main problem. And this uh, issue will modify quite strongly the way we can manage the ecological problem. Because everybody now agrees that there is a huge danger with this problem of the greenhouse effect, it becomes legitimate for public authorities to regulate this field. And even uh, people who are very liberal or very radical have common opinion. Public powers must regulate environment because there is a very big danger for the whole humanity. This is a huge change. And the change concretely is that because of this regulation is emerging a new market. Before these rules, ecology, environment was a cost for economy. Now, with the new, new public regulations, ecology, environment becomes a market and it will be more and more profitable to invest in this field. So, I think, and this is the third thesis, that what we will see in the next year is the emergence of a new kind of economy, the economy of environment, what some people call the clean tech economy. And we can say that in 
10 or 20 years, the, our society will be a society of knowledge and environment. That means that the main uh, issues for economy, but also the main opportunity to make profit will be in these fields, knowledge and environment. So I think we can say that the future of cities will be uh, very uh, much uh, influenced by the clean tech economy. And that's not necessarily what was imagined by the first people who were involved in ecological problem. People who were first involved in ecological problem thought that we need to change of society, to change of, uh, to live, uh, to uh, find an alternative to capitalism, to uh, have different way of life. With the clean tech economy, perhaps we will have a new kind of solution, capitalistic solution to the environmental problem. So the third thesis is that this new economy will change the issue in the ecology. As a conclusion, I would like to underline the question of mobility, which is really very important for metropolisation, for complexification, and for the question of ecology. We need to move more and more, and also to move more and more is a problem for ecology and green gas effect. So I think that the clean tech economy could be the solution to solve the problem of we need more mobility and mobility is an ecological problem. Because mobility is a very important issue, we have created in France a foundation which is called Institut pour la Ville en Mouvement, City on the Move Institute, which has been created with the car maker PSA Peugeot Citroën. And the job of this foundation is to help to develop the mobility, but an ecological mobility. So I would like to thank one more the Korean Green Foundation for this invitation. I'm sure that it will be a very big success and I hope that we will have new opportunities for cooperation. Thank you.